Welcome in to sportsbookreview.com. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the College Football Show, and we are doing the Big Ten. Starting off with the West, moving to the East. Yes, we understand there is a lot going on in the world of college football this week. We know. We get it. Texas, Oklahoma, all that good stuff. Today, we're just doing previews. Eventually, later on, we'll talk about Oklahoma and Texas whenever it actually gets done. Right now, there's not a lot to talk about with it. So, we'll move on with the Big Ten before we get started. Do us a favor. There is a link in the description. Go down there and click it. SBRpicks.com slash NCAAF. That is your one-stop shop for all of your college football gambling content for the entire season. So go ahead and check that out. It's a great team over there. They do wonderful things. They've got great analysis, great analytics, uh, a great synopsis of the sport, we could say. Easy enough. So go ahead and click that. And while you're down there, click that like button. It's a little thumbs up. Looks like this. Very easy. And you can hit that subscribe button. That would help us out as well. Uh, We are wanting to hit 100,000 subscribers very, very soon. So hit that subscribe button. You can click the little bell. Notifies you. Lets you know when uh, when we got videos going on. And with that said, let's dive into this thing. We are going to start it off with Illinois. The Fighting Illini just hired Brett Bielema. I think it was a smart smart hire. Yeah, it's a great hire. It's a great hire. You get a guy that understands... Not only the Big Ten, but understands that division. Knows how to win. Knows what it takes to get there. Uh, I mean, this is it's going to be a multi-year rebuild. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he's like, not going to come in and, and, and work magic. He, he, he runs, a, unless he has drastically changed his college football uh, philosophy. Philosophy is the word I was looking for. <laughs> philosophy. The, the way he sees the game, um, what he does is build from the offensive line and run the football down people's throats and control time of scrimmage, line, line of scrimmage, time of time of play. And uh, that takes three, four, sometimes five years to build, to, to get that level of offensive line play and continuity going. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be time. I think Illinois will give him the time. This is I not know, a school absolutely. that cares about winning right now. And I do think he's a good enough coach to where – no matter what, I think I think in three years going to a bowl game is not going to be a big deal for them. I, no, I think I, I think I he's going to do that. It's entirely possible that they could find a way to a bowl game even this season. Like, oh, I'm not, yeah. you know, the, that's, the that's schedule right. is difficult. But uh, it, now, what we talked about with the offense for sure, uh, the offense wants big offensive linemen. They want a power run game, mostly twelve personnel, and that fits the current roster. I was like, about to say they're set up for that. I don't; those guys aren't the quality and caliber that he is used to coaching correct at that position but that's how they are constituted right now anyway as a football yes. program yes i think so uh offensive coordinator is tony peterson uh veteran offensive coordinator like i think he'll fit in perfectly I, here i think, I think so. he nailed the staff hires like a defensive coordinator ryan uh, walters like came over from missouri and he's going to be a head coach eventually he's a young guy but you know hybrid defense um they're going to be interesting. Like they, he kind of plays positionless defense. Yes. the The thing that I like about what Brett's done is, like he's he's kind of been recruiting at Illinois. Something that hasn't happened in a long, very time. long time. Oh yeah. I like mean, that, going he, out and trying to get real athletes to get excited about coming. Yes. To the state school of Illinois. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Uh, he brought in transfer. I mean, Lovey Smith brought in a ton of transfers. Mm-hmm. Brett has brought in some as well. Uh, we look at the the win total here: three and a half to go over is minus one forty five. To go under is plus one fifteen. Uh, FPI rank sits at eighty seven here. Uh, the SP plus is being updated in you know this week at some point. So I didn't even put it down here. They went two and six last year, six and seven the year before that. Uh, to win the division. They are plus 4,000 to win the conference. They are dead last, plus yep. 10,000. That's right. Uh, as far as the win total, though, like I, I could totally see them going over. I think it is much more likely in this first year. I've got them going under. I like the plus juice there, plus 115, because I think it's going to take one season to kind of get acclimated to, what, to, to how Brett does it as opposed to the way that Levy Smith did it. I'd like to see him go over. This would be a, a scare play for me. The I like the overplay based on the number, but I'm not laying 145. Agreed. To 
on, on a play that I, I don't love, you're right. If you play this, you have to play the under and walk away. The, the I just only, don't think you can have confidence. Now, they get – Two good cross rivals in their East opponents, which is Rutgers and Maryland. It doesn't get better than that, okay? No, 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 no. Absolutely. Like, like you couldn't ask for I, – I guess maybe those teams could be better than Michigan State. But – Maybe. You know, but I, I think I think at the end of the day, all three of those schools, you put them in a hat, and if you're the West, you want two of them. The now, only, if you can get all three of them – I will tell that, you this. That's, that's a trifecta. The, I don't know that that happened. The only guaranteed win that I see on the schedule is Charlotte. Uh, uh, but you you like you like uh, UT San Antonio, UT San Antonio yeah. way more than I do. Like yeah. I I think Brett is a better coach. I think they're gonna have better athletes. Uh, like I I see that as a win as well. And it's entirely possible. I also see them being able to upset somebody because it's something Illinois has done historically, and it's something Brett has done historically as a coach beating someone you're not supposed to beat. Do you going over? No, no, no. Once again, I told you, you the play has to because of the price. Yes. The play has to be under or walk away. Yeah, I and think so. I just want to make it clear that's a price decision, not a. I think the number's right on. Yeah. which is what I which yeah, is right what at I three really and a half. Think. You can I totally see I, three or four. There's there's no world where I see them winning five of these games, and there's no world where I see them winning two of these games. You like might, I, I think you're right. That's I think you're it. right. Uh, we'll move on from there, and we are moving to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kirk Ferentz, back again. The most consistent thing in this sport is, is him being able to build offensive and defensive lines, for sure. Uh, he continues doing that. They started 0-2 last year. They won their six remaining games by an average of 21 points. They were dominant once they got the ball rolling last year. Uh, quarterback Spencer Petrus, uh, he's going to have to improve his reads, his improvisation. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to be in a, a quarterback battle, but he's the guy with the experience. Like the, the backup, Alex Padilla, um, there's lots of skill talent this year. Deep wide receiver core, Tyler Goodson back at running back. Uh, they, they got studs on offense. They, they got an experienced offense. They are, their win total sits at eight and a half. Uh, to go over is minus 110, to go under is minus 120. Uh, defense coordinator Phil Parker, uh, incredibly underappreciated. Just, I mean, that's the easiest way to say it. Nobody even really knows his name when you think about it, but I was always got a strong defense. They finished number three in opponent-adjusted P5 efficiency. So, out of all the P5 schools, they were the third-best defense in the country last year. That is pretty remarkable with a shortened season, shortened offseason, everything for them last year. Um, eight of their top ten tacklers are back. Top five against the run, top ten against the pass. Uh, top ten scoring. Uh, number one overall yards per play. Like, this is, this is an awesome team. They are favored in 10 of their games, and the two that they are not favored in, at Wisconsin, at Iowa State, they are less than a touchdown underdog, and the number is at 8.5. I'm I'm going to go over the 8.5. Like, I think, statistically, it is much more common that they would win 9 than they would win 8. So, I I fully expect a 9-3, and three, maybe 10-2. and two. Like, this is a dark horse to win the, to win the league. Their division odds, they're number 2 to win the division uh, at plus 175. To win the conference, they're plus 1,000, of course, because of Ohio State and whatnot. But, yeah, this is uh, – I really like this team this year. Yeah, I was I was just about to say, it seems like every year this is the team that we keep thinking, are they going to win the division this year? Are they going to win the division this year? And they're always kind of steady Eddie. Yep. They never have a bad season. But, man, they have been bridesmaid over and over. Wisconsin is just always a little better. Our Northwestern has been a little better. And that's what we keep getting. Yes. Um, is this the year that they can be the best of the division that one time? Um, I like the over. I agree with you on that. My my question is, is at 9-3, and three, does that win them the division? Probably not. Probably I mean, they, not, you, because I, I would think what's I've got Wisconsin winning the division this year. See, I haven't made up my mind. I, I think I think you're but probably I think, right I think it'll come there. down to that game though. And my other question is: Is are we just thinking both of those teams are better than Northwestern, who's won the division two out of the last three years? I think Northwestern has got some things to work on this year. I expect Northwestern to be good, but see, I quarterback coming gonna, in. I actually think they're going to be like, better. Well, replacing defensive coordinator, like there's. There's a lot going on at Northwestern, and typically for Northwestern, it's 
We'll you get know, there. every couple of years, every few years. We'll but get there. Either way, so you you like the over as well? I huh? do like the over. What was the price on that? Uh, over eight and a half is minus one ten. Yeah, I'm 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 with that. Yeah, so I'm assuming they're both about the same then. Yep. Well, minus one twenty for the under. Yeah, that's fine. So, all right, moving on. Minnesota, the Golden Gophers. PJ Fleck doing his thing. Uh, FBI ranking here forty nine. They expect him to go six and six. They went three and four in a shortened COVID season last year. Went eleven and two the year before that. And of course, after twenty nineteen, they lose Kurt Sorokin, uh, who goes over to Penn State and then loses his job. And they've kind of got things rolling now. Uh, it, a little bit of a rebuilding year, which for a team that doesn't just have immense talent across the board, you're going to have those drop off years after you have a big year. This that's is a school goes. that's not used to losing big NFL guys, and they they lost they one lost of the best lot. receivers in the draft uh, uh, this year. That's a big deal for an offense that that guy was a huge portion of it. Yes, Rashad is this, Bateman. Is this one of those things where they have been able to replace him with another guy like him in that offense, or is this hoping that we can continue the offensive ways but maybe in a different route, not having such a dynamic playmaker on the roster? They do have a dynamic playmaker, but it's the running back. Yeah, well, I know that. I'm talking so, about from the passing game. Yeah, from the passing game. Because it stretches the defense. Which opens the run game. Yes, in fact, if Bateman's not there, uh, you're right. You're right. Uh, all five offensive linemen return this year. That's a big that's, deal. That's huge. Um, that's big. That includes 2020 opt out Daniel Faalele. I believe I said that right. Nicely if I didn't, done. yeah, you guys can correct it, of course, in the comments. But he is six foot nine, four hundred pounds. Yeah, big boy. Massive, massive, gargantuan human. Yep. And uh, running back Muhammad Ibrahim. And quarterback Tanner Morgan, they are both back, of course. It is the first full offseason for the offensive coordinator, Mike Sanford Jr. Uh, 2020 defense was dead last in FBS in returning production. But this year, of course, a little bit better. They got a whole lot of guys back. Biggest question mark is going to be linebacker. Uh, they have not had a good pass rush ever since Fleck got there. They'll need to improve that, I do believe. Schedule sets up okay. Their win total is at 7, but... I got to tell you, like as much as I like, uh, as much as I like Ibrahim, the five offensive linemen coming back, uh, defense should be a little bit improved. I do look at this schedule and I look at the away games. You know, they've got at Colorado, they got at Purdue, at Northwestern, at Iowa, at Indiana, and then at home you've got Wisconsin, you've got uh, let's see Ohio State on here. Like I, I look at that road slate and I'm thinking, man, if you could have gotten some of those at home. I really think home field advantage is going to be a big thing this year. Yeah, and I agree. I think it's tough to get over seven. So I, I, I don't see eight wins on here. No, nope. I'm with you. I so, think seven's the number, and I think sevens are ceiling, which means immediate under. You have to go under under seven. That's minus one hundred and five. Uh, division odds for them, by the way, fifth plus eight hundred. If you think they're going to win the division, there's a world um, where Tanner Morgan kind of has a little breakout year, and possibly. Shows if hey, they find some skill talent, yes. Yeah, I can be special. That's what they're going to have to have offensively to to get over the seven. Very much so. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, Scott Frost. A lot of people thought that this would be a do-or-die year, I think, with the new athletic director coming in. Maybe it's not. But, you know, win total sits at six and a half. FPI projects them to go six and six. Uh, Mike Riley just destroyed uh, everything that built this program. It, it's And I, I hate to say that because I do think that Riley is a, a, yeah, okay, he's an okay coach, but everything that made Nebraska special, right, their walk-on pipeline, their strength program, like with all of that going away before Frost got there, we knew or we should have known that this was going to take multiple years to get this thing back rolling. Uh, it was never going to be, you know, a quick fix kind of thing. The quarterback competition this year, there basically is none. Like, this is Adrian Martinez's team. Right. And if that's what was causing him issues the last two years or three years, whatever it's been, uh, if that has been his issue, then I don't know what that says about him. Like, I, that seems to be uh, a little mentally frail if you're having to, if you're not playing well because of competition. But either way, it is his team this year. They've got transfer skill players kind of all over the place. Uh, a guy to watch out for, Montana wide receiver, Samori Torre. Uh, they, they got plenty of weapons this year. Like, even with guys that were transferring out, they got weapons. Their coaching, 
you know, was a little out of sync last year. Like if you watch them in certain games, I mean, they got a win over Penn State. They got some, they got some decent wins. They went three and five last year. Not great, but you know, I, it, it was it was strange. Like the play calls were weird. Just in almost every game, there were weird spots that it almost looked like they didn't know what they were doing. Like they were just scrimmaging. Like this was a, a fake year or whatever. Which I mean, I guess in ways it was, but. Uh, Top 10 in defensive returning production this year. Defensive line, uh, they have improved overall. Uh, I mean, they finished top half of the Big Ten for the first time since 2013 on defense last year. I think they continue to get better. They got guys coming back. I I don't – the number is 6.5 to go over is plus 110 to go under is minus 140. And I'm still going to go under. Yeah, I am too. I just – I look at this schedule and I don't see – at the most, if I'm giving them upset wins, I I can get them to maybe seven. But if the number's six and a half, and I think it is much more likely that they go five and seven or six and six, yeah. I mean, three of their last four games are Ohio State, at Wisconsin, and Iowa. Like, and I feel good about those. So, I don't know. I, I don't feel good about it. Like I, I feel like those three are guaranteed losses, and at Oklahoma is a guaranteed loss. And then, I mean, you got Michigan. You've got Northwestern. Hell, you, you got, got Purdue. Illinois, Purdue. I mean, even Buffalo. Like, this is like, the level that they're at program-wise. Yeah. Like, that's just where they are. If we're going to do an honest assessment of what this school is, we have to stop looking at them like they are on the same plane as Oklahoma and Ohio State. And they they're are certainly not, not. They're not close to Penn State or, or Iowa or Wisconsin or Northwestern. They're just not. No, not even close. Can they beat those schools? Yeah, sure, probably. Now, will they? I don't think so. I but, don't think so but either. can they? Yeah. that's a That would be a big upset, though. Okay? Yes. I just don't, I don't think this program is there yet. There's a world in which Scott Frost really isn't that great of a coach. There's a world in yes. which at... Central Florida at UCF. Right, he had everything built. He was able to recruit like a madman because you fall out of bed and you hit 20 athletes that are improperly graded by the rivals ratings just because there's so many of them in Florida. You can't have that many five stars. So a bunch of three stars, if they were in the state of Iowa, would be five stars. If they played high school football in Nebraska, they'd all be five stars. Yeah. But because they play against nothing but other four and five stars, they're they're viewed as threes. That That's just how it works. It's just not possible. Yes. The amount of athletes that you're able to have down there. If he doesn't have athletes, he doesn't seem to be able to, to scheme. That's, I, I think my, that's... my issue was the play call. You, you talked about that. My issue is it looks like he's getting out coached every game. It's not just that the other side is better than you. Because there are games where they're in these games. Yeah. And they're playing well. And they're going on drives. And as soon as things get pressured and tight in a game, he seems to be the one to always flinch, to always make the mistake. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, I'm guessing you're saying under as well. Oh, yeah. No, under. Okay. under. I, I, think, yeah. I think six and six is their ceiling. I really do. I'd be shocked if this team wins seven games. I I think I think you're right. I think they have a better shot at winning four than seven. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree. And I hate that. The, the, the sport is better when they're better. Okay? Like, I know we make fun of them. I know we crack on them a lot. But the game is, is more valuable when they have something to offer. Yes. Yes. Big Ten is better when you have one of those big-time brands that is actually playing well. Yep. That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. The Northwestern Wildcats. Now, we we like this team. We have been up to Chicago to go see them just in the last couple of years. We we have buddies that went to school there, and we do have fun with Northwestern. Uh, my my first question here, before we even discuss any of the numbers or anything, is how sustainable can their one score wins be? Because it continues. On and on and on. They they like to play in the mud. Pat Fitzgerald, uh, the number this year, win total, six. To go over is minus 135. To go under is plus 105. Uh, FBI projects them to go eight and four. Yep. Eight and four. Now, if you look at, like, returning proje- uh, production, they're, like, 126 out of 127 teams that played last year. 
that's kind of nuts because returning production is not always properly graded. The running back that is coming back for them only really came on strong in like the last two and a half games for them. The offensive line started to shift over late last year. Like what you saw towards the end of the season is what they look to be this coming season. Now you do have to swap over your quarterback, right? Peyton Ramsey gone. In comes Ryan Holinsky, who has had starting skill or starting uh, experience in the SEC. They do have to change over the defensive coordinator. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, I, I I do feel good about the offensive coordinator, Mike Bajakian. Yeah, uh, Bajakian, whatever it is, it's Bajakian, it, I think. The uh, it are they going to be able to click as well as Peyton Ramsey and he did last season? Bajakian, Bajakian, God, whatever. Uh, last year he called the offense almost exactly the way that I think that Fitzgerald wanted him to. And I, I'm wondering if he can do that again with another quarterback that will do exactly what he's supposed to do. I think they're going to open it up more. I think so, too. So last year you're dealing with all the COVID stuff. I definitely think this was one of those schools that knew they had a great offensive line, knew they had the best defense in the Big Ten that wasn't close, and thought this is how we win. Yeah. Yeah. If you know going into the season that you've lost a couple of big defensive players and you're going to have to open things up and score more, I I think it also you 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 lost a, an all world talent at offensive line as well. I I think which I think their offensive well, I mean, line is going to be just fine. Like he didn't even he didn't play last no. year, yeah. But like it's it's just one of those things where I think they are going to open it up. Yeah, I, I think he brought in a quarterback that's a transfer of somebody who can open it up. A bit of a gunslinger. Because yeah. remember when Brzezikian got hired on, I don't, I don't, I don't know how much he went and got Ryan Helinski as much as it was just a Helinski was the quarterback he got. He had. Yeah. This is a guy he went and got. This is a guy he he chose. He hand selected. Yes. I, I think this team is gonna be better. I think from the wide receiver position, they're gonna be more open, which is gonna open up run lanes, which is what Pat wants to do. Defensive coordinator. It's a big deal. But that was always Pat's defense. Yeah, I think Jim O'Neill is going to do the same th- thing. This is one of those situations I talk about all the time where when the head coach is the architect of what you do on that side of the ball, I kind of don't care who the OC or DC is. It just yeah. doesn't matter. It's just a placeholder because you're going to do what the head coach wants to do because that's his design. Yeah, defense um, coordinator was uh was who Mike uh, Hankwitz, I believe. I think it was uh, Hankwitz, Yeah. So, but he he retired after fifty plus years coaching, and last year might have been uh, the best. Oh, the, it was defense the best, that they've done. Best, like that's the best defense he's ever had in his life. Yeah. Um. Now they got to replace six starters this year. Yep. I think that they got skill. I think they got guys. They've coming been in. recruiting. Yeah. They've been bringing in depth. This is a school that has done a lot. I think they're done with the win the division one year. Don't make the play. Uh, don't you know? Don't make a bowl game the next. Win the division. Don't make the bowl game. Like I, I think we're done with that. I don't know that they win the division, but I definitely think this team isn't falling off. They're right in the conversation with Wisconsin and with Iowa as gonna be fighting for this division. I also think this schedule opens up as flawless and perfect as you can have one. They won't play a ranked team until. I don't know, week 10, week 9. They, here's where they – so Michigan State, Indiana State, at Duke, Ohio, at Nebraska, bye week, Rutgers, and then Saturday, October 23rd, they go to Michigan. Think Michigan will be ranked by then? No, they mm, might. They might. They I mean, might. That, that, I think it that's could. the first chance. It could, uh, but – But then you got Minnesota at home, you got Iowa at home, and then at Wisconsin, Purdue, and at Illinois. Because like there's a world yeah. where Michigan has played Washington and Wisconsin at that time. Yeah. And if they lose both of those, they're not ranked in this game, which means that – I don't know if Minnesota's ranked, so I don't think they would be. I don't think so either. Based on what we thought of them already, Iowa the next week is the first time they're playing a ranked opponent. And that'll be in November. No, that doesn't mean they'll be undefeated against that. We've seen Northwestern games before. Oh, yes. We've seen this story, all right? This is a team that that went undefeated in their division and lost three non-con games, two to, like, sub-football opponents. Yes. somebody else, yeah. yeah. Not, not just G5 schools, but little schools that yes. don't care about football. Oh, yes. So, well, it's because when, when you win ugly, there's always that chance. One mistake can cost you a game. Right. So... Yeah, so we're both going over, huh? Oh yeah, I'm I'm going way over. I think that eight and four is closer to what they can do. 
if they went nine and, and, and three, would not surprise me at all. Me either. There's no world in which I see them. What was the number? Six? Six. Yeah, there's, there's no world where they don't make a bowl game, though. Looking at this schedule? I, I tend to agree. I think I Duke is trash. I think they're, I they're going to come after Michigan State. Because Michigan State was the team that knocked them off. Yep. They were they undefeated. Got them last and they were, they were ranked. They were ranked like... Top 10 for the first time maybe in my life of watching Northwestern yes. football. And they got got. And they got beat by Michigan State. And they got beat bad. Because when ugly. you win ugly, you can get got. So, I, th- I think game one, they're coming for blood. The Purdue Boilermakers. Jeff Brom. My favorite coach in this conference. Win yeah. total. Brett's back. Was my favorite coach Was in this it? conference. <laughs> I forgot Brett's back. Win total sits at five right here to go under is uh, minus 125. To go under is minus 105. And, you know, in 2020, there were only 11 scholarship seniors. There were only 10 juniors. The youth movement should be experienced at this point. Quarterback battle uh, looks like it's going to be uh, Jack Plummer to uh, to win that job. Wide receiver David Bell is an All-American candidate. That dude's so you know, good. Brom has, has started, like, he has stated recently that he wants to get back to running the ball more, but he hasn't had the personnel to be able to do that. I think he might have it this year. Uh, Brom fired their defense coordinator, Bob Diaco. They hired former Charlotte coach Brad Lambert. He's kind of known for his attacking, disruptive defense. Like, you are never going to be able to get the the hosses in the middle at Purdue. Yeah. But you can get enough guys that can attack the defense, that can that can – Boost up your havoc rate and all that. You can make other teams turn this the ball is a over. That should go to the three three five. Yes, very much so. Very now, much so. If you're an offensive team that throws the ball, spreads everything out, you, you talk about your defense has to be a chaos driven defense. Yes, it's got to be crazy. They they cannot win in the trenches, which means you just have to wreak havoc. You have to bring chaos. They went uh, two and four last year. Went four and eight the year before that. Uh, it's kind of I mean, ever since that one season where they beat Ohio State. It hadn't been great. You know, they had Rondell Moore, but I think he played, what, two games over the last two seasons? Yeah, he, he hasn't played a lot. He was hurt. Yep. Um, but I, David Bell has has made a name oh, for himself. I think I think him, Moore being hurt last year was the best thing that ever happened to Bell. I think so as well. Because that guy showed the world, do not worry. I am here. I'm here, and I'm going to be awesome. really good. I I like this team. What's their total? Total is five. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it. That's I, tough. That's F, tough. FPI has them projected uh, six and six. And I mean they're going to be favored in do, 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 do. they're going to be favored in six games, yeah, five games, five games. So they'll be favored. Yeah, in but five. I'm going to I'm going to bet how many of those are less than a field goal. Mm. I bet a lot. Actually, none. Michigan State they're favored by a touchdown. Northwestern they are favored by it's see, and that's the problem. See, that's insane. They're favored by a touchdown over Northwestern, but a lot of that has to do with the, these stats have to do with returning production oh. and that. So that's that's just insane. I, I still. Seem to think that they could win at Nebraska. Like they could win over Minnesota. They could beat Illinois. Uh, they they can beat do UConn, all those Oregon things. State. I think all those games are going to be one score close games, though. I think they can beat Indiana. Like I think, yes, I, th- I think certainly they're going to be close I games. All the, I think Oregon but, State is going to be a, a close, hard fought one score game. I think getting rid of Diaco and bringing in Lambert, I trust Lambert. That's, that's probably and, that's a great move. Yes. And the fact that you are experienced again. You True. you have dudes that know what they're doing. Finally, if the number's only five. I fully think that Purdue can get to a bowl game. They're going to beat teams that that we don't think that they should beat right now. And they get Michigan State, Rutgers, and Michigan from the other side of the conference. Yeah. that helps. So you know, I I am taking I'm taking Purdue to go over the five. Oh yeah, it's I minus one twenty five. They got to go over the five just to get them to a bowl game, but. Tough. Oh, it's good. Oh, I, I think tough. I think a lot of these games are going to be much closer than the gambling experts think. Yes, I could I, be wrong. Those guys are more right than me. That just seems like they're not going to be a touchdown favorite over Northwestern when that game happens. I don't think so either. Like I don't care what Northwestern's record looks like or Purdue's record, they won't be a touchdown favorite. If you could get an early bet line on that game right now, I'd bet a lot on that game today if I could. There's just zero doubt you're going to get that. Agreed. The Wisconsin Badgers. Paul Christ last year was a crazy season. Yeah. Went four and three, but after they came out of the gates, I mean, smoldering hot. Like they, they were as white hot as you can get. And and then they had issues because obviously 
Everybody got COVID. They they were the yeah. first school that really got decimated. First school that had to cancel games, really, uh, at least in the Big Ten, I know. But the, the first big one yeah. that we knew of. And the quarterback caught it. I mean, they Jack Cohn went out with an injury, and then Graham Mertz had to do I mean, it was just a – it was a mess last year. Their win total sits at nine and a half to go over or under. Both are juiced at minus 115. FBI projects them to go nine and three, but here's the deal. They will be favored in every single game this year. At least preseason. They're projected to be a favorite in every game. Uh, there I think, are I think they will though. Like I'm looking yeah. at their schedule and I don't I don't see another team that'll have a maybe a better record than them, if not an equal record to them no. when they play. Um, the offense, I mean, looked completely different last year early. That was before injuries, of course, decimated before all the, the COVID stuff. Uh, I mean, the offensive line and wide receiver rooms uh, were completely decimated last year. Those should be rebuilt this season. The running back situation never improved from the beginning of the season to the end. How much of that was offensive line? How much of that was they could they just couldn't find a guy to replace Jonathan Taylor? Let, 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 let's get to this. Do we think Mertz is a guy? I think he is. You think... You think he could be the best quarterback in the in the Big Ten? No. No. I don't think he's the guy that can that can bring them a, a Big Ten championship because I think it's Ohio State's for as long as they want it. That, that, like, that's I, not I think, what I asked. I think C.J. Stroud is the best guy. I think Graham Mertz is right there, right behind him. Okay. So a guy that's never taken a stat before, you're just going to take that chance. I mean, Graham Mertz has only played like two games. Totally. <laughs> yeah, but in those two games, he looked amazing. Yeah, he looked great. But he was playing against you know Michigan's uh, Michigan. completely hapless defense last year, and we didn't know that when they played them, they looked hapless after Wisconsin did that. Right, but they also looked hapless after Rutgers scored okay. forty whatever on them. Yeah, like it, you, you feel like we both like Wisconsin. That's fine. Yes, I was just trying to gauge where you thought Merch was. The nine and a half here. I. I'm going over the nine and a half. Yeah, I think this is I a think ten win team easy. Yeah, I think I it's think ten there's wins. a world where they're twelve and zero when they go in to face Ohio State. Yeah, I think so as well. I think I think this is one of those years because of what happened last year. Yeah, I think they come out of I the think gates. that world exists. I think they come out of the gates swinging this year, just absolutely swinging. If I could, if I could get a big number on on you know, will they go undefeated? A good price on that? I'd I'd I'd, I'd play it. For the right price. Well, if you if you want to bet on them to win this division, plus one thirty five. Well, yeah, but that's a small bet though. I mean, yeah. plus one thirty five, that's fine. I'm talking about going undefeated. I think yeah. ten wins will win the division. What yeah, kind but of two pro- go undefeated. What kind of it's... price can I get? Can I get plus four hundred, plus five hundred, for them to go? Like if you set like an alternative Und- win total at like eleven and a half. Yeah, yeah well, set, set your win total at, from nine and a half up to eleven and a half. Uh, you could probably get it, yeah, probably plus 400 I'd to probably, go over 11 I'd, and a half. I'd probably take that J- just to try it. I mean, just yeah. as a flyer, why not? Well, yeah, I mean, if it's if it's over nine and a half is minus 115, yeah, I, I could see I could see getting no, they to. Could, they could, like I said, they could lose that week one to Penn State. They could lose week three to Notre Dame or four to Notre Dame. Like, 100%. They could lose both those games. This is a team that doesn't often – have the opportunity to go undefeated. This is true. This is the only reason this is a conversation. This is true. If this was Clemson or Alabama or Ohio State, nobody would be having this conversation. No, you're right about that. You have it here because of them. We will move into the Big Ten East, starting with the Indiana Hoosiers. Tom Allen is the head coach there. The number sits at 7.5, and and we're going to try and speed this up a little bit. Um, Division odds, they are plus 900. They are fourth to win the division. FBI's projected record is eight and four this season. So with the win total being at seven and a half, over minus one twenty, under is minus one ten. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. is back, and boy, do they need him. That offense last year, even when he was not injured, the offense was not very good. Uh, just looking at opponent adjusted stats, like IU was the eleventh best offense out of fourteen last season, even when Penix was on the field. So. While we saw all these dynamic plays that he was making, they weren't efficient. They weren't a great team. Now, the defense was fantastic, but defense loses defensive coordinator Kane Womack. He's the new head coach down at South Alabama. Uh, Defensive line was huge last year, but, man, they lose a lot of dudes. Uh, The secondary is great, but they're going to need that front seven to be good this year, Uh, as good as last year, if not better. I, 
I wonder if last year was just kind of a one-off thing. This this feels more like a six and six, seven and seven team to me. I'm gonna go under that seven and a half at minus one ten because as much as I love Tom Allen, as much as I love what the Hoosiers are doing, I think we are much closer to seven win Indiana as opposed to nine win Indiana. You know. Yeah, I think I agree. I I think this team seven wins is their ceiling. I think so too. I cannot see them winning more than seven. I mean, they, they start off at Iowa, and then they play Cincinnati in the third game of the season. Yeah. And then the fifth game and of the they season, play they play at Penn, Penn State. State. No. Like, you got Ohio State. You got, at, and of course, at Maryland, at Michigan, at Purdue. Those are all games that, if they were at home, I would feel a lot better about them. That's right. That's right. That's it. That's right. So, I just I, I feel like it's a ton of toss-ups here. I don't think that they're going to get to eight. Of course, watch Allen go out and completely prove me wrong, but... Uh, no, we, we, look, we're going to be wrong on a lot of these. I mean, we're not oh, going to yeah. be right on any, you know, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So that that's possible. But I think both, it's much more likely that they go we, under. Though. We both think under, and we both think under. I mean, I kind of think under easily. I think so too. What was the price on these again? Uh, under is minus one ten to go over yeah. was minus one twenty. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I would go. I'd go under, and I'd take the minus one ten so, easily. A lot of hype on them after last season. That's right. So, but that's that's not the way like it goes. Penix. That's the way it goes. The Maryland. Terrapins. Am I good, sir? Mike Loxley is rebuilding the talent there, but it it's not quite to that point just yet. Like they, it's all young talent. Like last year was this was such an inconsistent team. They were all over the board. They lost to Northwestern by 40 in the first game. They squeaked out a win over Minnesota and then blew out Penn State in the third game of the year. And then they dropped their last two games. They are as unpredictable as ever. The roster talent being upgraded, it's not experienced yet. It's not fully there yet. But, they, I mean, they are doing big-time things there. Baby Tua, Talia Tonga-Valoa, he showed flashes last year at quarterback, I think. Offense, they've got enough explosion to go off for 40 on basically any given night. But, again, incredibly inconsistent. Defense coordinator Brian Stewart has come back. He was the, the leader, the guy that commanded those defenses uh, in three of the best four years of Maryland's decade, like this past 10, 12 years, whatever it is. There's talent on defense, like especially in the secondary. They only had four takeaways last year, so I think you could kind of look for that to improve this year. But, you know, they went two and three last year in five games. They had four takeaways. I think, you know, that's all right. I think we'll get more this year. The win total is at six. And to go over is minus 110. To go under is minus 120. And while I do like Mike Loxley, I do like what they're trying to do there, I look at this schedule, and and I see in the non-con, West Virginia, and I see Kent State. Like I think they'll get the win over Howard. But Iowa, at Ohio State, at Minnesota, Indiana and Penn State come there. Michigan comes there. they got to play at Rutgers. I don't see six. I can't get there. Just mentally, I cannot find six wins for them. I got to go under the six at the minus 120. Yeah, I'm under as well. I don't think this defense is going to be any good. The offense could be great one week, but the very next week could be terrible. They, they could get blanked. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that you said they could put up 40 any night, and then they could get shut out of the end zone the entire night as well. Yes, 100%. But, but I'll tell you this. Either game, they're giving up 40. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Michigan Wolverines. We get to talk about Harbaugh. What are the chances Matt Campbell ends up there if the Big 12 splits up? <laughs> I know you don't like talking about it. Uh, FBI projected record here is 6-6 six and six for the Wolverines. Their win total, however, is 7.5. To go over is minus 145. To go under is plus 115. And to win the division... Second best odds, plus 500 to win this division, right behind Ohio State. So, of course, there's several other teams that have those exact same odds. That's the way it goes in this division. Uh, last year's 1-3 start, that was the worst since 1967. Offensive line and quarterback have been uh, not great. That Just disasters for Jim Harbaugh. And, you know, this is year three under offense coordinator Josh Gaddis. We will see what uh, what this thing looks like. I think they call it the dirt bike offense. Cade McNamara looks to be the quarterback this year, but he is going to have some competition. 
Alan Bowman uh, comes in from Texas Tech. They got their five-star freshman, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he looks to be the future. I mean, if I was Harbaugh, I'd probably start McCarthy, I mean, as quick as I could get him in there. But, I, yeah, you got to have him ready, right? Like, yeah, I think Harbaugh's just trying to win games. I, I think so, too. I don't too. think he cares anything about trying to play the right. I mean, he just want to play the best guy that day. Yeah. New defense coordinator is Mike McDonald comes over from the Ravens with, of course, Harbaugh's brother, John Harbaugh. Uh, he replaces Don Brown, and uh, and he's moving the base scheme to a three-man front. It kind of keep up with the RPO offenses that are going on that, I mean, they just got trounced by last year, like destroyed by those RPOs. Defensive roster, got a lot of hybrid guys, a ton of hybrid guys, and they should flourish better in this type of offense, I think. So, I, you know, a lot of people want to be down on Harbaugh, all that kind of stuff. I think last year, you go in two and four, they were just nine and four the season before that. I'd... I'm kind of sold that they're going to be better this year. Yeah, like, they're going to be better. Last year was a weird ass COVID year. I'm I'm going over the seven and a half. Yeah, I, I think they're going to win some games that people I'm, do not expect. We're agreeing on everything, but yeah, I I, I think you're right. I, this team's better than people. The hate has gone too far. Yes, that's just it. Like it's one thing to to say they were never as good as they thought they were. That's true, but they're not nearly as bad as people are making them out to be either. Yes. That that can also be true. Not being able to beat Ohio State does not mean being, you know, five and seven in this conference. Like those two things, they're they're gonna be somewhere between that. Yes. Yes. I agree. This is this is a eight and nine win football team every year. And that's not good enough for a lot of people in Michigan. That's fine. My conversation to them is is Get over it and change your expectations. The sooner you change your expectations and realize who you are, the happier you will be. Harbaugh is you a coach watch that understands college how to football. Win. You can watch college football and really enjoy it if you stop thinking it is your birthright to go 10-2 and two every year or better and to beat Ohio State every other year. Like that's As soon as you acknowledge that, we can move on and you can have a happy life and you can love college football again. Speaking of moving on, Michigan State, the Spartans, led by Coach Mel Tucker, he did not have an offseason last year. He no. got nothing. No, he got hired very At, very, very late end in the of game. February. Yeah, very end of February. It got no chance to bring in a recruiting class, anything. Um, I mean, if I were him, I would leave too from Colorado. I mean, my gosh, the amount of money that Michigan State threw at him was absolutely absurd. But either way, he did not have an offseason. He did not even get to meet his players until they got to fall camp. Like, And then, of course, they cut fall camp short That's right. because they canceled the season. It was a disaster. Just an absolute disaster. Um, I mean, who, who knows what 2020 meant looking at it. Uh, they, they didn't... They brought in 18 transfers. They lost 27 transfers. Like, this is completely rebuilding, uh, rebuilding the roster. Like, it's a complete overhaul. And I have no idea what it means. Like, the offensive line was terrible. Running backs were terrible. The quarterback, Rocky Lombardi, has transferred out to Northern Illinois. The new quarterback that's coming in, Anthony Russo, comes over from Temple, and they were not great last year. They weren't good either. Um, I mean, who, who knows what this team is going to look like on defense? I mean, it, it, last year was the worst at, at Michigan State since 2016's 3-9 and nine team. And before that, I mean, it, it was the worst in 20 years. I mean, it's just terrible. Um yeah, they lost their three best defenders. The the two deep looks, I mean, almost completely different. Like, this is just a completely different team. The number sits at four and a half for them. And, you know, okay. Uh, like, over is minus 125. Under is minus 105. FPI projects them to go six and six. That's insane. Which is the same as Michigan. That's insane. But I, I don't know how you can... God, how do you get to six wins? Well, how, how do you get there looking at this roster that has just been completely overdone? I, I, like This is where the analytical part of... Well, the analytics have uh, no idea what to do, that's, I think. But, the, but they're still trying to do something. Yeah. Hang on. That, therein lies my problem with analytics right there, Gary, is you have a computer that doesn't know how to use eyes because it doesn't have eyes. It doesn't know how to use a brain because it doesn't have a brain. It just computes data. And people put data in and it spits out an answer. Okay? Analytics lie all the time because they don't know what they're doing. No one on earth 
can look at this roster and look at what Michigan State has gone through the last year and a half, 18 months, and tell me that ah, six and six about right. I That's look, insane. I've got I've got five and, and maybe six immediate losses on here. I got and, I got and, two guaranteed wins on here. If you told me their over under was three and a half, I'd take the under. I'm gonna take the under four and a half for sure. Well, yeah, I, because if it was three and a half, I'd take it. Like it, this year, having Miami as as one of your non cons, and you got to go down there. That's tough. That's don't, tough. Don't feel good about that. That's Western tough. Kentucky, I think. Like, even though I I fully expect them to be able to beat Western They'll Kentucky, beat West Kentucky. They'll beat Youngstown I, State. I do think Western Kentucky can be a little bit better. Um, well, yeah, because that that's another team that we have no idea what to expect. Because no, but they're still they're still bad. That's fine. I I, I think they'll beat them. Okay, like. There, there's a world where they but can beat by two or three touchdowns from Rucker. That's two ter- That's two guaranteed wins, right that's there. Two. It's Western Kentucky and Youngstown State. That's the list. That's where it stops. Everything else is losable. They can, but they also can, winnable. They can get beat by two scores from any of the rest of these schools. Now you're right. They're gonna. I think they're gonna win at least one of these other games. Okay. Yeah. There's a chance they can win two of them. They won't be favored in any of them, and I think the majority of them won't be close. That's. That's my synopsis of what's going to happen to them this year. I think they guarantee win two. I think they got two coin flip games. They could win. They could lose both. And I think the rest of them, they get housed. Yeah. They're, they're two, three scores away from being in the thing in the fourth quarter. Like, it's ball game. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. So, I think their miracle, miracle is four. Yeah, I tend I tend to agree with I don't, you. I don't, I don't know. We're both how, going under. I don't know how any of the analytics work to get to six and six. I, this isn't a team that was even a team last year. That's like that's what I'm saying. Not, but this is why I don't. Then just just give me you know no information, but giving bad information or wrong information means I can't trust any of the information. Just because you project Clemson to go twelve and zero, when you say this team is six and six. That eradicates what you just told me that's always right. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right about that. The Ohio State Buckeyes. 12 we, we got three left. I kind of I kind of think 12-0. Uh, 11 wins here is their over 100. To go over is minus 120. To go under is minus 110. I'd like to see um, them lose two or three games. I just don't think that happens. FBI projects them at 11-2. and two. I'd really like to see Oregon beat them. <laughs> they, they went 13-1 and one two years ago. Lost in the playoff. They went seven and one last year. Lost in the national championship game. Uh, it's a three quarterback race. You know, I, to replace Justin Fields, I feel good about C.J. Stroud. Um, it doesn't matter, but who, who knows? It, it no. doesn't matter. We trust Ron Day, right? Oh, one hundred percent. We trust Ron Day. Wide receiver room, who, best who, in the country. Who, yeah, whoever yeah, takes the snaps through. with this offense driving this machine that Ron Day has put together doesn't matter. The doesn't matter. He's the he's the best. Play calling head coach, I think, in college football. I think so too. Now, the problem last year, a lot of it was defense. I think defense was a bit. Now, of course, now they some also of that's had COVID the machine issues. he drives. Hang on, I'd, I'd like to. As soon as I said that, if Lane Kiffin or a guy like Mike Leach or somebody got to drive that car, I think they would also be considered yes the best play calling mind in head college coach, football. Yeah. yeah. So agreed. Agreed. That, 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 so I, I want to correct myself there. There are other guys. Nobody has the. The offensive mind that he has and the machine that he has. Yes. Kerry Coombs came in, took over the defense because Jeff Halfley, the defense coordinator in his first season, left to go be the Boston College head coach. That's right. Uh, defense was eaten up in the title game. Uh, there was just not enough speed in but the back end. defense looked really good in the first playoff game against Clemson, though. Yeah. Yeah. And that's against, you know. But also the defense was playing against a team that didn't have their offensive coordinator. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot about so, that. Who called plays in that game? Uh, a moron. Yeah. That's that's Tony, it. Tony Elliott was uh, was not to be I, found. I did forget. I, I I was actually trying to give him credit. No, that was well, not I'll, an I'll attempt at a shot. Last year that it was I forgot about. They they had a lot of guys that done, were that were not plays. the most athletic in the back end of the front seven. Like that their linebacking core just was not great. It was it was great True. in the Big Ten. And against this conference, yes. But not great once you get to that level. They have another right? premier edge rusher, or no? They're still. I think they names. got some guys, but I don't know who's going to stand out. Not a out. Chase Younger or Joey Bosa. Team. Not right now. Okay. Not right now. But th- those guys didn't really pop up until sophomore, junior season. True. And and we didn't know really going into them that uh, 
that that was what they were going to be. Uh, full off season, they I think this is good for the defense. Sure. They could not establish press man coverage on the outside last year, which was uh, the scheme that absolutely has to has to work for Kerry Coombs. That's that's what he runs. And if you don't have that speed, if you don't have those corners that can cover, because remember they had Sean Wade last year trying to play outside cover. And he got exposed. I mean, so it, he's bad. a slot corner. Like that's he, that's what he is. He really got exposed, and it really hurt his draft class. Which it, it did, but it, it should have hurt his draft stock, though. I if this number was eleven and a half, I would go under based on principle. Well, if it was eleven and a half, I just need to see the price. Yeah. That's all. The price is going to determine all of that. Yeah, uh, the price is minus one twenty to go over the eleven. The price is minus one ten to go under. So the price doesn't matter to me. When they're that close, it doesn't matter. When they're that matter. close, it doesn't matter. And I don't see... I, I mean, they're, listen to their road Worst game. case scenario, it's a push or, or a win. They're, they're, they're not losing two games. I'd love to see them lose two. Yeah, they're, they're not... Two. Yeah, it's a push or a win. Uh, they, their road games are at Minnesota, at Rutgers, at Indiana, at Nebraska. And at, I don't see them losing At any. Michigan. Oh, did they play at Michigan? They're at Michigan. Not, not that I think that matters. So, let me... All right, so... Oh, you're right. This team is big. This team is good. We don't need to talk about that. Because that didn't bring any value to anybody. Everybody already knows that information. Who plays a tighter game? Oregon or Penn State? Both at the big house. Same place. I think Penn State. You think Penn State hangs with them more than Oregon? Yes, You're I really do. worried about Oregon's secondary. I so you think terrified. Penn State's got a secondary that can stop this track meet? I think they've got a better secondary. Oh, I don't know. I think that defense got decimated, too. They I mean, lost some horses as well. As a matter of fact, let's go on and move over to that. Uh, by the way, division odds to win just the division is minus 275. I was just about to, to say win, minus two what? To, Almost well, to win, minus 300. To win the conference is minus 140. Yeah. But I think that's to be expected. So, uh, we both got them going over 11. So, moving on we to James. disagreed with a single thing yet. I think we, we both kind of knew that we were going to see this the same way. Yeah. I, I guess we just have the same biases for this conference. A little bit. A little bit. The Penn State Nittany Lions. James Franklin is still the coach, even after a four and five season last year. It was a weird, weird year. They had Journey Brown uh, come down with basically a medical retirement, so he couldn't play last year. Michael Parsons decided to opt out. He's the best guy on the defense. They had all kind of guys opting out here and there. Noah Kane ended up, uh, I believe, he got hurt early. It was just a strange, strange situation. And Kurt Soraka, like his one season. It was eh, but so I've talked to some people that believe that Mike Yursich is the guy that they wanted the whole time, and Soraka was the the backup plan. So when Yursich came open after Texas, that's why they they got rid of Kurt. So we'll see what that means. I don't know, but I've I've had guys tell me that. I mean, that's what I would say too if I just fired the other guy and hired the new the new guy. I mean, he, he did run the 2019 Ohio State offense, so... But isn't but, that what you would say if you just hired that guy? Well, yeah. That's the guy we wanted to begin with, but we didn't get him. But we didn't get him. Somebody Texas should internalize him. that in the in the office and say, we're Penn State. Why did we not get our first choice? That's a, uh, uh, This okay. is my problem with Penn State. You know this. Oh, I know. Is they should be a lot better than they are, and I think it's their fault they're not. The question about this team on offense is... The quarterback, Sean Clifford. True. They they got horses. They got talent. Yeah, this offense should be really good. Can Sean Clifford be awesome? And he was he was good the last four games of the year. They I mean they started 0 and 5 and then won their last four and he looked dynamic, but that was against some really not great teams. That's right. Not great teams. Uh and statistically, this team was much closer to uh a six and four or seven and Two or what? Like they, they were very close to being really good, and they had some really bad losses. Like they just made no statistical sense whatsoever. As bad as the defense seemed last year, they were still a top three Big Ten defense. Uh, they had several losses last year that that should have been wins. Like I said, there's too much talent, too much firepower on this team for them to be bad again. The number is nine. It's minus one fifteen juiced on both sides, and I look at this schedule. And I understand that there are some, uh, there's some speed bumps here, but I mean, I, I look at Ohio State, at Iowa, at Wisconsin, but then I don't, I don't see another loss on the schedule besides any of those, and I think that they could win one of those at least. 
Man, I but I also it. see that they could lose one of these other games too. Which one are you saying? I mean, would it shock any one you? of them? Like Indiana, it would or? shock you if you lost if they lost to Auburn to you because your thoughts are on Auburn. But like Auburn, Michigan, Indiana, none of those would shock me. If Rutgers upset somebody, we're gonna get to them next, bro. You think that team's just gonna lose all the games they're supposed to lose with Greg Schiano as their coach? Their ceiling is nine, in my opinion, because I don't think they're better than Wisconsin, and they haven't beaten a team they're that's better than them in a long time. They haven't upset anybody in a long time, so I don't. I don't right, trust so we, them. We're finally getting, we're finally getting a disagreement. We're gonna get a disagreement. Okay, because, I'm going over because I think that this is a ten win team. I think this is a. But you good think, team. That, but yeah. they got to beat a team that you think they're better than. I think they got to upset Iowa. They got to upset Wisconsin, or they got to upset or Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah, I think it's more probable that they will lose to one of, lose all those games, and lose to one of Auburn, Indiana, Michigan, Michigan, Rutgers. or Rutgers, or or they'll, they'll yeah. lose a the game they're not supposed to because that's been the Franklin way. Yeah. Okay. You, you Franklin hasn't there. had a clean season other than the one season where they won the Big Ten. No, I mean they they did go eleven and two in two thousand nineteen, so you know, like I, I I do think they still haven't beaten a team that's better than them. If that team we, is better do, than them, do we know that Wisconsin and, and Iowa are substantially better than they are? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. You tell me. I think they are. I I think Iowa and I Wisconsin think every both. year I keep walking into this conference thinking Penn State's supposed to be good. Penn State's supposed to be the second best team in this conference. And Penn State is so far beyond where they're supposed to be that it's not close. And I can't respect them. Okay, so say that they don't lose to Nebraska and they don't lose to uh well, I mean, they don't play Nebraska. So no, no, I'm talking about last game. year, last oh. last season, because it was a it came down to the. It wire. wouldn't change my opinion. Beating teams you're supposed to beat wouldn't affect my opinion, Gary. Okay. okay, I need you to show me where they've beaten a team where they were underdogs in that game. I need you to show me that in the last At several him. years of Franklin being their head coach. I don't have it. I don't have it. So one year okay. against Ohio State, the one time they won the Big Ten. That's the list. Once. And that was off of a blocked field goal. <laughs> and since then, it don't matter how you won because you're yeah. at least in the game. Since then, haven't done it since. And Ohio State's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And everyone says, well, look at Clemson. Well, look at Alabama. No, no, no. I can't explain Clemson other than the fact that if you want to compare yourself to the ACC and say you're just a trash conference, be my guest. I don't think that's true. You want to compare yourself to the SEC? Well, Alabama has losses. Not a lot. But they have lost to Auburn. They have lost to LSU. They have lost to other teams before. You're supposed to be the Auburn. You're supposed to be the LSU of your conference. You're not. And they hadn't been. You're losing assistant coaches in in in, in trying to get the guy you want to other big boy schools. That doesn't happen if you're really that big boy, if you're really the Penn State you think you are. Valid point. I want Penn State to be better because I like the Big Ten. I like watching the Big Ten. And I would like some competition there. There is none because they haven't stepped up their game. I think they're going to be underdogs against Iowa, and I think they're going to be underdogs against Wisconsin. And Ohio State. And Ohio State, obviously. And I think they're going to lose all those games because they haven't shown they can win a game where they're not the underdog. They're on and the road at all point, three of them. At that point, they would have to win all nine of the other wins just to push. Just a push. That's my logic. And that's, the price the price isn't worth enough to make a difference on price. Yeah. I like him over. I, I you want, like him under. I want Penn State to be better. I want Franklin to be better. I don't know why he's not. I can't figure out why they're not. Yeah. Okay. Like, I look at it as they, I mean, they had won double-digit games in three of the last four years prior to last season. Last season seemed fluky. I think this team's going to get back to doing what they do. I think this, the outlook for this season will look completely different once we get to the middle of the year. That's that's the way I view it. Okay. So we shall see. Now we got to wrap up. We got one more team left, and that would be the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This is the wild card of the bunch. This I think it is. I think it is. Greg Schiano is doing some pretty outstanding stuff here. Uh, win total sits at four for them. Minus one fifteen is juiced. 
up or down, one or the other. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a pretty crazy schedule. They've got some very winnable games. Oh yeah, um, but a lot of losable games too. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. just a ton. Well, it's uh, a wild all, card team. Yeah, oh one hundred percent. Beat by Delaware, and they could beat Michigan. All eleven starters come back for offensive coordinator Sean Gleason, uh, quarterback Noah Vidral. Um, I mean, they. This is an offense that that ranked bottom ten in almost every category in 2019, but they improved every stat last year. That's like right. they really improved defense. Uh, they made you know, I guess bigger statistical gains in 2020, and and they were the third most improved defense in the Big Ten last year. Uh, they're they're making moves. I mean, they they're going from a four three to a three three five, and you know, again, it, like we talked about with Michigan, this to keep up with the RPO stuff like that. Uh, the D brought in like a bunch of transfers. They should improve more this coming season. They're still not quite there yet. No. But, you know, uh, win total, again, sits at four, and and I look at it, and I think that they can get to at least five. Like, I, I think they could it, – it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. None of them is going to be easy. But do I trust Greg Schiano to be able to get this done? I think yeah. he can absolutely I – think, I think he can get to four, and I certainly think he can get to five. I'm going over – Um. Really would it surprise me to see him go three and nine? No, it would. But, that actually would surprise me because I trust Yano. I really think he's that good of a coach, and you I, know that. I think that they could win their first three games and they could lose. Do you realize everything else? How strong of an improvement they were. Twenty twenty COVID year. The only difference in that team from the twenty nineteen trash fire was Shiano took over. Yeah, he didn't get to recruit. He didn't get to spend any time with his kids. Just when he got on the sidelines, he took the same trash that was there in 2019 and made them better. Yeah, they were two and ten in 2019. They went three and six last year. And all the hang on, games they lost that Michigan game. They lost. Oh, that they game. were in them. They were in these games. Yeah, and they're running crazy ass plays. They're doing things that you. But that's what you have to do when you're an underdog. This is what Kansas should be doing. Yes, this is what these small schools, these bad schools, should be doing in these big conferences. You play the game straight up, you are going to lose. But if if you bring havoc and chaos, you have a chance. You have a chance to win. Yes, you do. I think Shiano's going to upset one of these teams. It wouldn't surprise me if he did it to one of the ranked teams because he we, shows up big in big spots. And I like I like Sean Gleason. So uh, we're both going over. Yeah. Right. And, and once again, they could absolutely lose to one of these bad teams. Yes. Absolutely, it's going to be a wild card, but I, I, we both trust Shiano. I, so, I like Shiano. Let's, uh, let's talk about the conference championship game here. Who you got? I mean, it's Ohio State and Wisconsin. I, I would, I, 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 agree. I need Wisconsin to win this game for me, just for my sanity and for my, I don't know. I would love to see Iowa in happening. this one. I don't think it's happening. Iowa's the same as Penn State with me. Like I can believe they've it. been that number two spot forever. I, and that might call just be me the when ceiling. they win the damn thing. Yeah, that might just be the ceiling. That is the way it goes. Because it's always like somebody else just jumps in front of them. Anyway. Is there anything else we need to hit let's on? Get out of here. Let's let's decide to do that. All right. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for sticking around this long. We know it was a little bit longer, but my God, it's the Big Ten. What are you gonna do? Lots more to discuss. We will be doing the SEC uh in a couple of days. So make sure that you check that one out as well. Head over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. There is a link in the description. Do us a favor. Like the video, of course. You can also, uh, oh, subscribe. Thank you. My mind just went completely blank there. <laughs> and if you want to argue with us, of course, jump in the comments right there. Or you can always follow us on Twitter. I'm at Gary WCE. I'm at Crispy Giannini. And I think that's it. Let's get out of here. This is a long one. But you guys have been great. All right. For sportsbookreview.com, I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we will see you all again next time.